Barnett called me, notified me about the Ten Commandments and the protest. The Tallahassee atheists agreed and joined in because we support secular reasoning. It was a truly awesome event, and it was only a dozen of us in protest on the secular side, and there was about 150 people on the uh, religious side, so it was pretty much outnumbered. At this time, I would like to give credit to some of the people that were at that event. Daniel Cooney and his sons, Brandy Brashler, Ken McKinnon, Bridget Godet. Where are they Sean going? Frazier, Where are they going? Melody Where are they? and Nathaniel. And believe it or not, we actually had a few religious people that were on our side protesting with us because they did not agree with what this monument stands for. And we'd like to thank them for their support. If you'll notice, the last two names, I mentioned only their first names. They don't want to use their last names. It's because of constant harassment of non-believers in the workplace by religious individuals for the simple fact of being an atheist. This has to stop. Nobody in the United States should ever have to deal with this sort of religious bigotry. No atheist, free thinker, non-believer, or anyone should ever have to hide the closet anymore. Here, here. Well said. As this country begins to realize that religion and the belief in God is an ancient belief system of the dark ages, it will become obvious to even the most religious individual of what our founding fathers wished for is a secular nation. Just in the past week, the United States Supreme Court struck down two of the most bigoted laws that were based on religion and religion only, Woo! DOMA and Prop 8. That's right. Woo! That's right. Atheism and secularism is growing by leaps and bounds, and we will have our voices heard. At this time, I'd like to introduce an amazing lady who's helped our cause, Ellen Beth Wax. Bridget Godet. <laughs> Bridget. <laughs> I thought maybe my name had changed. <laughs> <laughs> Last summer, I was appointed the Florida State Director at American Atheist, whose mission in part is advocating for the complete separation of church and state. Although my time with the organization, organization was cut short, I was able to participate in some real community activism right here in Stark while I was working there. After hearing about the Ten Commandments monument on um, courthouse property, it was obvious to me that this went against the wishes of many of our founding fathers, including Thomas Jefferson, who very clearly and famously stated that religious institutions that use government power in support of themselves and force their views on, others, on persons of other faiths or of no faith undermine all civil rights. Erecting the law... of separation between church and state, therefore, is absolutely essential in a free society. I mainly knew that I wanted to do something about this. After all, this was happening in my state, and I wanted my voice to be heard. So I thought I should get some like-minded people together for a traditional peaceful protest with some signs, meet the residents, and express our concerns about what we saw as the wall, of, the wall separating church and state crumbling. This was an easy step for me. It had only been about a year since I could admit to myself that I was an atheist, let alone being so open and public about it. 
Plus, being a black woman, this is that, you know, it's not very often that you will see an open atheist activist. And especially in tall, small town Florida, so I was concerned about the reception. Still, this is something I feel passionately about, and, and I felt the onus was on me to do something. others to do so as well. Make sure your voice is heard. So I contacted several other atheists in the state and most of us agreed that a protest would be a really great first step. So we came, we talked, and we listened. And after the monument was still left up, American Atheists filed a lawsuit requesting an injunction which, if successful, would have required the removal of the monument because it violates the Establishment Clause of the United States Constitution. Before I left American Atheist, I found a local willing to be a plaintiff. I work with the attorneys, and I'm proud to say that I, with the support of many others, helped lay the foundation for the first atheist monument on public property. Woo! So you might be wondering why we chose this course of action with the protests, especially since most of us don't even live in Stark. There are two primary reasons. First of all, we all live in the United States. There, are, <clears throat> We had to let the people of Stark know how we felt and also give them an opportunity to talk to us face to face. That way we can come to a mutual understanding and perhaps right any wrongs that we felt we had. Second, there are many atheists and secularists in this city that share our views, but they were reluctant to voice them because as individuals, it was harder with the weight of a national organization behind them, they felt more confident to step forward. And I just want to add that I encourage everyone to use their voice, not just people I happen to agree with. Let's have a conversation. Trying to understand each other's perspective shows maturity and respect. Recognizing and correcting misconceptions is also always helpful. One of the first things that people say when they find out I'm an atheist is, but you're so nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've heard yes. that before. <laughs> <laughs> Most of us are nice, and most of us are open to discussing calmly what we believe in. And as I was leaving the protest, there was actually a lady that came up to me and gave me a hug and said, she was one of the counter protesters, and she said she was surprised at how respectful we were. So if there's one thing we can agree on, it's that we are all human, deserving of respect, whether believer or non-believer. And... you're going to hear from Ellen Beth Wax. She is the founder and co-president of Atheists and Humanists of Florida. Thank you.
They weren't ignored. We can look around and see that these atheists made sure that they weren't ignored. Last year, right here in this very spot, atheist activists made a lot of noise to send the very clear message that we will not be ignored any longer. Woo! Woo! That's right. One more. One look at this historic atheist bench monument, and atheists will never again be ignored in this public square. It is time to make sure that enough noise is made so that we can never be ignored again. When I was asked to give this talk, I was told it was an opportunity to tell my story. Well, I would like to think that there are a few chapters left in my book, but my story is very simple. I am an activist, and I will always be an activist. community that we all desire. I had the privilege of serving as a plaintiff in an invocation lawsuit that was seeking to stop my local government from performing solely Christian prayers at commission meetings. I was simply seeking to be recognized as an equal participant in my government and an equal member of the community without having pass a religious test. For my simple request to be treated as an equal, I faced outrageous retaliation, not just by the local Christian community, but by government officials. I had my house searched and ransacked by a SWAT team. I was held in solitary confinement for almost a week. I've been defamed and my privacy violated. But I stood for something, and my voice was heard, and I was not ignored. I bring up my experience as a plaintiff, in part because Daniel Scott Cooney became a plaintiff after me in the lawsuit which brings us here today. It was brought up after mine. He was willing to stand up and be one of those loud voices, unwilling to be ignored. <laughs> he knew the potentially devastating consequences he faced by standing up and making noise. And he did it anyway. Activists do. Activists don't act without fear of the consequences. Activists act in spite of the fear of the consequences. <laughs> Activists make noise and they refuse to be ignored. Please welcome one of those activists, Daniel Scott Cooney. Cooney, plaintiff. Good to see y'all. I prepared a big speech, but when I got done with it and reread it, it occurred to me it looked more like a quote book. So uh, I decided to keep it simple and I'll keep it brief and just share with you uh, a little bit of what Miss Ellen Beth had kind of touched on how I came, became active. Uh, as so many of you can, I'm sure, uh, relate to, it just 
tempting just to stay at home and try to ignore what's going on around you. In this particular instance, it was a little too close to home for me to ignore. It was easy for me to ignore what was happening in Dixie County. It was easy for me to ignore what was happening in any number of places. You pick, pick a spot on the globe, but I couldn't ignore it here. And uh, Honestly, I lack the resources to combat something of this nature by myself, so I did what I think any intelligent tactician would do, and that was find me a friend with a big stick. <laughs> and I don't regret doing it. Uh, Good for you. I've met the organization have been super people. Uh, really impressed with the quality of people. And uh, so here we are. It wasn't quite what I had hoped for. I think we had all wanted the simpler approach of simply having the Ten Commandments removed from the courtyard. Uh, Mr. Edwin Kagan had proposed an idea to me that at first uh, didn't sit too good with me, which was, okay, well, let's fight fire with fire, basically. Let's put up our own display. Woo! Uh, and at first, I had, I had no trouble coming to terms with that. You know, for how many years we've been taught two wrongs don't make a right. But by the same token, when you look at it from the standpoint of we could fail uh, in having this removed and, and that be that, and just simply be thrown out of court and because of double jeopardy and so forth, we wouldn't be able to do anything else, or we could try a different approach. Though, so, personally, I would just assume when you face that rock there and see a car for all those who served or something along those lines. I hope that eventually this turns out to be a worthwhile, worthwhile idea, and I suspect it will. And today, to me, is evidence that Mr. Kagan, Kagan was correct, and uh, I think something good is going to come out of this that I originally referred to as display, but to me it is becoming a monument. And uh, I just want to thank you all for coming out. And next, uh, the gentleman I've been speaking about, Mr. Edwin Kagan, National Director. Of of our republic created this nation with the guarantee that no one in any part of our government could ever decide what religious beliefs or lack of religious beliefs should be the official doctrine of our secular nation. Separation of government from religion has kept us a free and powerful people. American Atheists is a national organization dedicated to maintaining this vital constitutional wall between church and state. Today, in the presence of the world, we again make history. Today, for the first time in American history, atheists dedicate a monument to atheism on public land with the consent and cooperation of the governing authority. This is true Americanism, where widely different views can all be a part of the American experience in a great crucible of freedom. In acceptance of our many differences, we fulfill the visions of our founders that we are truly, despite our disagreements, one nation indivisible. That we have become a union of free people and that in our union is our strength that we are a nation that is out of many one.
To protect these monuments is to protect the freedom for which we stand. To defile these monuments is to defile the graves of our martyrs. Let those doubters who will not accept the reality that religious belief and atheism can share the same plot of common ground come to the Bradford County Courthouse in Stark, Florida and there witness, experience, and celebrate the stark reality that our future can be better than our past and that we are and that we will continue to be a free, unified, and powerful people. behind me, delivered and put in place. Um, many are referring to it as the Atheist Monument. Uh, to be accurate, I believe the program says a monument to our secular nation. <laughs> but I'm going to just quibble a little bit. It's not really just an atheist monument, monument or a monument to our secular nation. It's a piece of granite with words carved in it, not unlike what is here to my left. Um, by the way, that's not, those aren't the Ten Commandments that I grew up with. Uh, but what strikes me on this occasion is the power that we ascribe to words. Words can express love, learning, comfort, but they can also destroy friendships and families. They can cost people their jobs. They can instill hatred, escalate misunderstandings, and start wars. The fact that we have some people behind us trying to drown out our words is testament to that. Fear of what we might say. <laughs> Today we are dedicating for the people Woo! of Bradford County <laughs> some pieces of granite. Um, by the way, that's a mixture of quartz, mica, and feldspar. <laughs> and again, with inscribed words. It is hoped that these words will inform and, yes, even challenge those who take the time to read its messages. And I must commend the designers of the monument and the most efficient use of space and the most incredible information. Um, and yet it is beautiful, it's absolutely beautiful. So please take time to look at all of the messages. I choose to quote one of those messages because to me it embodies one of the most powerful statements about atheists. Those of us who live without the promise of eternal life or without the fear of eternal damnation. But live and know that our lives are valued based on what we accomplish, how we treat one another. So, <laughs> and the following is one of the quotes on the monument. An atheist believes that a hospital should be built instead of a church. An atheist believes that a deed must be done instead of a prayer sent. An atheist strives for involvement in life, not escape into death. He wants disease conquered, poverty banished, war eliminated. And many of you know who the author of that quote is. Madeline Murray O'Hare. American atheist 50 years ago, I believe this year. Wow. Yes. And probably a woman whose name 
invoked such hatred and such vitriol, again, showing the power of words. The people who hate just her name and really have never read or heard a word that she ever said. So with great humility, and I, I hesitate to do this, I dare offer these additional words to this quote. An atheist would prefer a piece of granite be used to educate, to inspire questions, and perhaps even to be useful. You will see that this piece of granite does that. It provides a place for someone to sit. Gonna bring granite in. That's right. That's right. I like that other one. I am honored, incredibly honored, to be a part of this memorable occasion. It's very hard not to use the word monumental. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud to be a life member of American Atheist, and I'm also a leader of a center for inquiry, secular. <laughs> <laughs> a secular humanist, a skeptical group based out of Fort Lauderdale, um, our particular branch. I look forward to a time when issues of separation of state and church, and that is the right way to say it, and the battle to keep our government and laws truly free of religious influence has been won. I look forward to that. I look forward to a time, and I can tell you, I have been teaching college chemistry for well over three decades, and I see it beginning to happen. I see the younger generation who are letting go of the prejudices, who are free thinkers, and who don't have a problem with someone being called an atheist or whatever. I look forward to a time when words like secular, humanist, free thinker, doubter, agnostic, and above all, atheist, where those words no longer provoke hatred, fear, and discrimination. And that will be accomplished through education, through exposing people to what we believe in, and through objects such as this. So please take time to read all of the information on it, and thank you very much for listening and for being here. Woo! Introducing the man with the big stick, <laughs> uh, President of American Atheists, Dave Silverman. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you to all the speakers who made this day happen. Thank you to all the activists who made this event happen. Good afternoon, Atheists. Good afternoon, Christians. No! <laughs> oh, look, you're in the minority. <laughs> I am thrilled to be here today with you on this warm, humid, sunny day. That's what it says in the speech. It's supposed to be a sunny day for this historic event. Now, today, America's atheists take another step forward in our struggle for equality as we as a nation take a step forward towards the American ideal of a pluralistic melting pot society. Across our country, public lands are littered with religious monuments, most notably depicting the Ten Commandments like the one beside me. Out of ignorance, most people believe the Ten Commandments to be some bland, benevolent set of ethics on which all nice people can agree. These are the people who have never read the Bible or the context in which the, the commandments are given. As our monument will remind people, the Ten Commandments are not benevolent, but barbaric. Most of the commandments are regularly ignored because, are regularly ignored because they are irrelevant to modern society. Only three of the ten have any similarity to U.S. law. But one thing almost all of the commandments have in common is the God-prescribed death penalty for the many, for the things many of us good moral Americans do every day. For instance, 
The second commandment prohibits graven images of anything that is in heaven. So I guess that's pretty bad for the Catholics who wear or display crucifixes carrying graven images of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Indeed, the fact that the Catholic Church actually removed this commandment proves that the church officials agree that this version of the Ten Commandments contradicts Catholic dogma and the penalty is death. Work on Sunday? The Old Testament says you deserve to die for your labor. And then there's commandment four, taking God's name in vain. God damn it, that carries the death penalty too. <laughs> for a disrespectful child or a cheating adult or a cheating spouse commandment 10 prohibits coveting the very basis for capitalism <laughs> America itself would cease to exist if this commandment were obeyed nearly every Christian in America mo ignores most of these commandments and they deserve to be ignored because they are mostly irrelevant and the government should not allow religious groups to promote the commandments out of a misguided allegiance to primitive pre-American morality. But then there's the first commandment. I, the Lord, am thy God, and thou shalt have no other gods before me. Amen. Martin Luther paraphrased this commandment, I think correctly, as, Thou shalt have and worship me alone as thy God. Once again, the penalty for not observing this commandment is death yeah. by stoning. Amen. And that's where we come in, Cy. <laughs> As this is obviously our strongest objection. The demand, the demand to worship one God of one religion under penalty of death is the very essence of theocracy. Hello. Taken in context, it's the exact opposite of religious freedom, fitting the definition of hate speech. As it incites prejudicial action and violence, against non-adherents. And it's sitting on the playhouse lawn. <laughs> the good news is that the Constitution requires all branches of the government to be fair and neutral when it comes to religious viewpoints. So atheists, thank you, so atheists nationwide are able to counter religion's morality of yesteryear with honesty, compassion, and equality. In that vein, American Atheists offers an alternative monument which tells the verifiable truth with no underlying threats at all. So look at this monument when it's when you're on your way out. It is now been unveiled. Woo! Now, when you look at this monument, the first thing you will notice is that it has a function. <laughs> Atheists are about the real and the physical, so we selected to place this monument in the form of a bench. So Starks residents can gain something they once did not have, another place to rest a bit on a Sunny Florida day. <laughs> the inscriptions on the back on the bench include the one from my predecessor, Madeline Murray O'Hare, who founded American Atheist 50 years ago. Often called the most hated woman in America by those who wished her silence, Madeline demonstrates in this quote that Jeanette read, promotes one very important thing from the ten, that's missing from the Ten Commandments. Compassion. Compassion. Woo! Not so hateful at all. I am proud that 50 years after she founded American Atheists, her words of <laughs> compassion are now immortalized on public grounds for the first time. That's awesome. 
Some people lie about religion's importance in the founding of this country. So we included some inscriptions of some verifiable quotes from Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, just to set the record straight. Even though some of our founding fathers were religious, they all agreed and indeed went out of their way to create a secular constitution providing a wall of separation between religion and government. The only religious decision they made was to omit God from the law of the land. <laughs> Furthermore, few people know about the Treaty of Tripoli, the country's first treaty, which was written by order of George Washington, ratified unanimously by the first founding Senate and signed into law by John Adams, which states specifically that the government of the United States is not in any sense founded in the Christian religion. This treaty, <laughs> this treaty and these quotes are not what religious historical revisionists would like you to believe. They are not indicative of people who founded a Christian nation, but rather they are actions of religious and non-religious people who understood that government and religion must be kept separate for a free and diverse nation to flourish. Our message to America is clear. Atheists are everywhere and we demand equality from our government. Of course, of course, equality is an all or nothing prospect. So in free speech zones like this one, where religious views are promoted, all religious and non-religious positions, including atheists, Satanists, and Muslims, are allowed the same opportunity. to believers is also important. Read your Bibles and your holy books. One of atheism's biggest problems is that not enough Christians read their Bibles. <laughs> That's right. There you go, yeah. This allows preachers to interpret the Bible's contents as they see fit because very few people who own what they claim to think is the perfect word of God can't actually bring themselves to read it. It's no mystery why few believers actually read their Bibles. They're afraid that if they did, they would understand how flawed it really is. In short, in short, ignorance of their own Bibles keeps Christians Christian and empowers crooked preachers and politicians to do as they see fit in the name of God with parishioners' money without challenge. Touché. Yes. Indeed, Christians who don't read their Bibles are allowing religious freedom to be in danger, hurting themselves and their country on the whole. I urge, beg, and dare all believers everywhere to read their holy books for themselves for real. Amen. In fact, <laughs> all of the speakers of today's program have signed this Bible. And I will give this Bible to any Christian who will promise to sit down with it and read it cover to cover. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are here today not only to unveil a new monument, but a new ongoing project for American atheists. This is not only the first permanent atheist-sponsored monument on public land, ladies and gentlemen, it is the first of many. Yeah. I am 
pleased to announce that thanks in part to a generous anonymous donor, we are embarking on a mission to place up to 50 monuments on public land. Woo! affiliates, some of which are represented here today, including Flash, <coughs> Atheists of Florida, the SSA chapter from UCF, and our newest affiliate, the North Florida Atheists, which meets right here in Bradford County and already has 50 members. Right on. where the Ten Commandments or other religious propaganda are placed on public land and American atheists will work with them to ensure that the truth is placed next to the lie and civility is placed next to barbarism. <laughs> In most cases, we accept to accomplish this goal without substantial legal costs as we have the right to place our monuments anywhere they place theirs. And this has been confirmed by the Supreme Court, a point which even the Men's Christian Fellowship here in Florida agrees. Mm -hmm. However, we are prepared to fight any legal battles that emerge from this effort. So in the cases where local politicians are so <laughs> entrenched in the bigotry business of religion that they insist on spending taxpayer dollars to preserve inequality, by refusing to allow our legal and inclusive monument, we will be ready to take legal action, win, recover court costs from the municipalities, and place our monument there anyway. We will expose the Ten Commandments for the religious intolerance they represent, and the violence and the hate they endorse, yet command. We will educate people about the true and provable secular nature of our country and highlight the lies religious leaders tell their flocks. And we will do it nationwide. Yes. <laughs> Diversity, equality, democracy, true American values never mentioned in the Bible but elemental to our great nation and required for any ethical society. Religious intolerance had a lot to do with the founding of our colonies, and it is the reason that America's founders deliberately created a secular constitution. It is time, ladies and gentlemen, to re-examine Christianity to expose its nearly insignificant role in the founding of America and the framing of our constitution and its utter lack of value in modern society. Today, Today we begin to spread the truth and raise awareness of American atheists in a new way, expanding on the methods of those who wish to hide or distort the truth by using the Constitution in the way it was designed to have our say as equals in the melting pot that is America. <coughs> Fun and it will be much less humid over there, I swear to God. <laughs>